right, you guys did it. You finished chapter 19. We are done with the book except the epilogue, which is usually a closing statement or commentary that kind of sums up or closes up the end of a book. So let's read the epilogue together. Welcome back to Reading with Reggie. Just so you know, Reggie's not my dog. It's my mom's dog. We did not get a puppy. We are not crazy. Just my parents. Okay, let's find out what happens to Brian. The pilot who landed so suddenly in the lake was, oh, we're on page 178. There you go. The pilot who landed so suddenly in the lake was a fur buyer, mapping Cree trapping ma camps for future buying runs. Drawn by Brian when he, was, when he unwittingly turned on the emergency transmitter and left it going. The Cree move into the camps for fall and winter to trap, and the buyers fly from camp to camp on a regular route. When the pilot rescued Brian, he had been alone on the L-shaped lake for 54 days. During that time, he had lost 17% of his body weight. He later gained back 6%, but had virtually no body fat. His body had consumed all extra weight, and he would remain lean and wiry for several years. Many of the changes would prove to be permanent. Brian had gained immensely in his ability to observe what was happening and react to it. That would last him all his life. He had become more thoughtful as well. And from that time on, he would think slowly about something before speaking. Food. All food. Even food he did not like never lost its wonder for him. For years after his rescue, he would find himself stopping in grocery stores to just stare at the aisles of food, marveling at the quantity and variety. There were many questions in his mind about what he had seen and known. And he worked at research when he got back, identifying the gains, the game and berries. Gut cherries were ter termed choke cherries and made good jelly. The nut bushes where the fool birds hid were hazelnut bushes. The two kinds of rabbits were snowshoes and cottontails. The fool birds were, were ruffled grouse, also called fool hens by trappers for their stupidity. The small food fish were bluegills, sunfish, and perch. The turtle eggs were laid by a snapping turtle, as he had thought. The wolves were timber wolves which are not known to attack or bother people. The moose was a moose. There were also the dreams. He had many dreams about the lake after he was rescued. The Canadian government sent a team to recover the body of the pilot and they took reporters, who naturally took pictures and film of the whole campsite, the shelter, all of it. For a brief time, the press made much of Brian and he was interviewed for several networks, but the Fuhrer died within a few months. A writer showed up who wanted to do a book on the complete adventure, as he called it, but he turned out to be a dreamer and it all came to nothing but talk. Still, Brian was given copies of the pictures and tape and looking at them seemed to trigger the dreams. They were not nightmares, none of them was frightening, but he would awaken at times with them, just awaken and sit up and think of the lake, the forest, the fire at night, the birds singing, the fish jumping, sit in the dark and alone and think of them, and it was not bad and would never be bad for him. Predictions are for the most part ineffective, but it might be interesting to note that Brian had not, had Brian not been rescued when he was, had he been forced to go into hard fall, perhaps winter, it would have been very rough on him. When the lake froze, he would have lost the fish. And when the snow got deep, he would have had trouble moving at all. Game becomes seemingly plentiful in the fall. It's easier to see with the leaves off the brush. But in winter, it gets scarce and sometimes simply non-existent as predators, fox, lynx, wolf, owls, weasels, fisher, marten, northern coyotes sweep through areas and wipe things out. It is amazing what a single owl can do to a local population of ruffed grouse and rabbits in a few months. After the initial surprise and happiness from his parents at his being alive, for a week it looked as if they might actually get back together. Things rapidly went back to normal. His father returned to the northern oil fields where eventually Brian visited him. And his mother stayed in the city, worked at her career in real estate and continued to see the man in the station wagon. Brian tried several times to tell his father, came really close to doing it once, but in the end, never said a word about the man or what he knew, the secret. And that is the end of Hatchet. You made it, you got it. Gary Paulson would be proud. I am definitely proud and so is Reggie. You say goodbye to Hatchet and say goodbye to Reggie.
Have a good day. Love you guys. Or night if you're staying up reading late at night. All right. Love you guys. I miss you so much.